Hi, I'm Danny McKinley and this is Forbidden Island, the two to four player game entirely cooperative. I am here at Zia Comics in Las Cruces, New Mexico. I'm going to teach you how to play it today. So in Forbidden Island, players take on the roles of adventurers. There are also six character cards that correspond with the player colored pawn that you'll be playing with. Every player can either pick these or play at random depending on how you like to play. And each one will give you an added ability and on the opposite side will show you the order of play as well as all the actions you can take. So the engineer may shore up two tiles for one action. The messenger can give treasure cards to a player anywhere on the island for one action per card. The navigator can move another player's pawn two adjacent tiles for one action. The diver can move through one or more adjacent flooded or missing tiles on the board for one action. They swim through the empty spaces. The pilot, once per turn, can fly to any tile on the island for one action. And finally, the explorer can move and shore up diagonally. Playing these cards in addition to playing the strategy will be key to your victory. They are on this island, and the goal is to get these four artifacts and escape safely before the island sinks out from under all the players. There is one way to win and a lot of ways to lose. So let me show you how this game works. On a player's turn, they are going to take three actions, and these actions can include anything from moving, which would be moving up, down, left, or right, one space. Players can occupy the same space as another player. So for one of my three actions, I may move to the watchtower. The second one, I may move down to the whispering gardens. Another action you can take is shoring up. As the game continues, island pieces will start to get flooded. You can shore up any tile that you are on or adjacent to, like so, by flipping it to the not flooded side. You can also give a treasure card to another player. You'll be collecting these treasure cards to try and gather the treasures, like so. If I believe that the blue player could use one of these, I can use one of my three actions to give them that card. Because finally, the last action you could do is capture a treasure. If you have four of the same card of one of the artifacts and you are on one of the two spaces showing that artifact, you may discard those cards and gain that treasure. The goal is to get all four of the treasures and then escape from this space called the Fool's Landing, which is the helicopter pad. Players are going to be working together because as the island pieces start to get flooded, they might also sink and be removed from the board. At the end of the turn, players will draw two of the treasure cards, hopefully getting the cards that they need to get the treasure, or, or then drawing a number of Waters Rise cards, or Flood cards. There is 24 flood cards, one for each of the locations, and as the card flips up, like this one, the Tidal Palace, we would flip over the Tidal Palace space, showing that it is now flooded. If, at a later turn, that card comes up again, the Tidal Palace, and it is flooded, then that card and the tile is removed from the game, and that is now missing from the board, making it more difficult for the players to maneuver around. You will always start with six of the locations flooded at the beginning of the game. And you will set your difficulty based on this Waters Rise marker. Now, this is the flood meter. There are four levels, Novice, Normal, Elite, and Legendary. The higher you start on, the harder the game will be. Now this deck, the treasure cards, are mostly really good cards. And some will give you abilities, like the helicopter lift, which will let you move your pawn, as well as any other pawn that's on your space, to another tile. You also need a helicopter lift to escape from the Fool's Landing in order to win the game. And there is also sandbags, where you can use to shore up 
one tile on the island without using an action. The rest of the cards are treasure cards and waters rise cards. These are the worst cards in the game because when this is drawn from the treasure deck, the player shows it immediately and three steps happen. The first step, we move the level on the water one space higher. Next, we take all of the cards that are in the discard pile, shuffle them up, and then finally, we put them back on top of the deck. We do not mix them in. We put them back on top. So, any cards that have came through will be coming right back. As I said, there's one way to win the game. If the treasure deck ever runs out, you reshuffle all the cards, including the Waters Rise cards. And as players are playing, if they sink from under one of the locations, they just move to the, clear, the closest space. However, since the goal of the game is to get the four treasures, there are two locations for each treasure. If you have not received that treasure yet, and both of the tiles sink and are removed from the game, then you, have, as a team, have lost. Also, if this water level ever gets to the skull and crossbone on the top, then you have lost as well. And finally, if Fool's Landing, since you need to escape from this tile, ever sinks and is removed from the game, you also lose the game. So knowing all these, that'll be critical to making sure that they do not sink out from under you, and to making sure you escape off the island safely. Succeed in doing this, and you as a team will win the game. And that is Forbidden Island.